Hey, what's going on everyone? So I've been meaning to make this video for a while, but uh, just due to a couple different things happening in life, uh, I'm making it now. <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my first experience shooting Cine Still film, specifically the 800T. Now just a brief rundown for those of you who may not know, Cine Still 800T is a tungsten balanced 800 speed film that is essentially repackaged Kodak motion picture film, specifically the Vision 3 5219. They've used this film stock on lots of different movies from La La Land, Dunkirk, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Shutter Island, Good Time, American Horror Story, Saving Mr. Banks, Shame, True Grit, Silence, Call Me By Your Name, like the list literally goes on and on. So I flew up to Seattle for Christmas to visit my family. It was nice getting to see everyone. Now of course, while I was there, I had to find a camera store and pick up some film. I was stoked to see some Cine still. As some of you may know, this stuff goes in and out of stock like crazy, so I wanted to see what all the hype was about. I don't live in a big city, so I really enjoyed making photos here. I actually really like this shot. The colors have that classic Cine still look. Now, as the sun started to set, I continued shooting, but it was time to pull the tripod out. I finally made it back to my family's Airbnb to finish off the roll. And I particularly like how this shot came out. I feel like the halation really adds to it. Now real quick, let's actually talk about this for a sec. Uh, some of you may be asking, what is halation? It's essentially that red glow you see around the light sources. This actually happens because of the way Cine Still is made. To actually take that Kodak motion picture film and convert it into the film that we can use in our SLR cameras or medium format cameras, they have to remove what's called the Remjet layer. Now what that does is actually makes it so they can process it in your standard C41 developer. Now some people really don't like the halation in the photos and feel like it could actually ruin the shot. Me personally, I actually really like it. I think it can sometimes even add to the photos and kind of play off almost be another character within the shot. That's just my personal opinion though. All right, so now I'm back home from Seattle and let's fast forward a few months. Now we don't get a lot of rain here in Southern California. So when we finally did, my girlfriend Annika and I have decided to go out and make some photos. really like how this shot of the red window came out and I was really impressed to see how the Cinesville handled this scene.
I love the halation glowing around the bus stop. It's like one of my favorite parts of this photo. Now with this picture, I was kind of hoping the blue would contrast a bit more in the scene, but I think it still came out all right. So lastly, I wanted to run a few tests for myself. I was curious to see how this film stock handled a daytime scene. Now I've looked at other people's images on Instagram and Shot Deck and, and other resources, but I really wanted to run these tests for myself just to see how it rendered on my camera and just in my everyday real world usage. So I wanted to take some shots midday at like golden hour, kind of sunset-ish, and then I wanted to take some shots at blue hour, even though I already kind of know what blue hour looks like, just to run some different tests to see how it could come out. So I took these shots of my buddy Jonathan, and honestly I was expecting them to come out a little bit more blue than they were, but it came out pretty balanced, not super warm feeling, definitely not Portra, but yeah, the grain structure looks pretty good, uh, and honestly came out better than I was expecting. So I took some photos a little closer to sunset, with lots of highlight and shadows in the shot, just to see how it would handle a slightly more dynamic situation. Next, I just took a few really simple backlit photos of some grass. Obviously, none of these shots are portfolio worthy. They're just really just to see how the colors look and to see how the film renders daytime scenes. Now would I shoot this film during the day again? Uh, maybe. <laughs> With other options out there like Portra 800 or 400 or really there's lots of other film stocks that handle daytime scenes better than the cine still. Um, if it was the only film I had on me, sure, I would use it. But yeah, like I said, I was definitely not my first grab for daytime scenes. Now let's talk about where this film actually excels and that's very obvious, it's the blue hour and the nighttime stuff. This film handles dark scenes really, really well. If you have a tripod and, and just do a long exposure and open it up, you can capture a lot of shadow detail more than I was expecting. Using that photo of the red window for example you can see on the iPhone footage it was really dark you could barely see and I, I believe the the exposure was about 10 seconds long and we were able to capture a lot of detail and it was sharp not super grainy for the all things considered and the colors are also just fantastic I feel like this film definitely has a classic unique look that I can just see a shot and I know yep yeah, that's that was Cine still 800 and that's personally why I love it. You use it because it has that distinct look and its, and its flaws and its characteristics. Now really quick actually, let's talk about some of those flaws and also just its, its overall consistency. Like what I've said about the halation, I personally like it. Some people see it as a flaw. I like it, so I don't even write this off in the flaw. I actually put this at a, a pro. I like that about the film. But one thing I'll, I'll talk about, and I noticed this across almost every role I shot of it so far, and also I've heard other people talk about this. You get some light leaks in the beginning of the role, maybe the first five frames or so. Sometimes it looks really good, and sometimes it might be a little much for my taste. I do like the look of light leaks, so I'm not upset. Some of the shots I feel like are enhanced by it a little bit, but it's kind of random and if it happened on a shot that you didn't want a light leak to happen on, be a little bit bummed for sure, uh, but it definitely doesn't deter me. And this was just based off 35 millimeter. I don't know how the 120 compares or anything like that. I personally haven't shot it on 120, so take that for a grain of salt. And take all this for a grain of salt, I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, I'm just sharing my first experience here with the film. And that goes for all my videos too. I'm just sharing my personal experiences. I'm by no means uh, an expert at all here, so I'm just kind of sharing, you know, my my knowledge and what I've learned. So yeah, to sum it up, I would say use Cine Still at Blue Hour or in the nighttime. Mixed lighting situations look really, really good with Cine Still, and I personally really like it. I have quite a few rolls sitting in the fridge right now, and I'm definitely gonna be shooting this more often. I see this being kind of one of my go-to nighttime films, that's for sure. If you guys can find this anywhere in stock or at your local film store or whatever, I would definitely suggest picking it up and just giving it a try. It might not be for everyone, but I feel like a lot of people will really enjoy 
using this film and the look that it gives. All right, I think that's gonna be it for this one, you guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, you comment down below, you subscribe to the channel. I definitely plan to continue putting more videos out in the future, so you guys all have a good one. Peace. Thank you.